classmates. If you remember last week, we already talked about the classical philosophy and the modern philosophy, and just now, Group 3 presented the postmodern philosophy. And at this moment, we will talk about the philosophy of our current era, the contemporary philosophy that deals with epistemology, metaphysics, logic, ethics, aesthetics, the philosophy that deals with mind and language, and that philosophy that deals also with political philosophy. Good afternoon. Greetings to my fellow classmates. Good afternoon, sir. This is Ria, and on behalf of my group, this is group four, and we will present about the contemporary philosophy. Sit back, relax, enjoy your coffee, and to our first presenter, go ahead, Vladi. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Mark Vladimir B. Manapat, and I am the reporter who will discuss contemporary philosophy. Contemporary philosophy refers to the current era of philosophy, which is from late 19th century through the 21st century. Contemporary philosophy has myriad types or countless and extremely great number of types of philosophy. Here are some of them. Philosophy of religion, political philosophy, analytic metaphysics, philosophy of language, philosophy of science, epistemology, aesthetic, secular, humanism, analytic philosophy, etc. It is also the present period of the history of Western philosophy from the early 20th century with the increasing professionalization and the rise of analytic and continental philosophy. Here are some philosophers from post-analytic philosophy from year 1908 up to the present time. Slavoj Zizek, Marta Nasbom, Gayatri Chakrarorty Sipiak, Judith Butler, Jean Paul Charles, Gu Su, Thomas Nagel, John McDowell, David Chalmers, and Cornel West. For the first philosopher, I had to discuss who is Slavoj Zizek. He is a Slovenian philosopher known for his contributions to cultural theories whose works address theme in psychoanalysis and idiosyncratic approach to psychoanalytic philosophy and political philosopher. Born in March 21, 1949, a 73 years old Slovenian philosopher who's known for most prominent public intellectuals of the late 20th and 21st century. He was born in Ljubljana, Yugoslavia, now known as Slovenia. Um, another thing from his work is he lives his work with humor that made him popular in the Western intellectual from the 1990s. One of his main philosophical works is centered in ideology, which is the sublime object of ideology. Here are some facts about the sublime object of ideology. It was published in December 1989 as pages of 336, and the publisher is the Verso Books. It is considered his masterpiece was published with preface by the Argentine political theorist Ernesto Laclau, who suggested that the nonlinear structure of the text is faithful to the retroactive effect in Lacanian psychoanalysis, which is a theoretical system that explains the mind, behavior, and culture through a, through a structuralist and post-structuralist extension of classical psychoanalysis by the work of Jack Lacan from the 1950s to the 1980s. In the sublime object, object of ideology, the Jack rejects the notion of a substantial individual subject, where the usual understanding the I in the René Descartes dictum cogito ergo sum, or I think therefore I am, 
in English language recalling the cyclic progress of history and ideas through thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. He also conceives of the subject as something purely negative void of being barred subject of unconscious which Lacan refers to. Hence, there is no real meaning of a dream or any real value of a commodity, contrary to the views of Sigmund Freud and Karl Marx. Here are some facts about Zizek, a Slovenian philosopher, cultural critic, and psychoanalytic, a researcher at the Department of Philosophy of the University of Ljubljana, Faculty of Arts, a director at the Burbeck Institute for the Humanities of the University of London. He has two children, his wife named Jella Craig. They married at the year 2013. His parents named Jose Zizek and Vesna Zizek. Islavoj's main interest is ideology Marxism. Notable ideas, interpassivity over identification, an ideological fantasy where ideology as an unconscious fantasy that structures reality. Did you know the Jack face was a semi-paralyzed and the doctor removed a cancerous tumor from his liver? He is a postmodernist. He is professor of philosophy at the European Graduate of School, EGS. The slide shows some of his great works. Here are the other famous philosophies of Stavoy Zizek are Looking Auri, an introduction to Jack Lacan through the popular culture, 1991 a literary and media studies argument for the importance of psychoanalysis. Tarrying with the negative, Kant, Hegel, and the Critic of Ideology, 1993. A detailed study of German idealism and politics. The Monstrosity of Christ, Paradox or Dialectic, year 2009. Living in, end, in the End Times, 2010. And less than nothing, Hegel and the Shadow of Dialectical Materialism, 2012, and the Sublime Object of Ideology, 1989. That's all for Slavoj Zizek. I hope you learned something. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is Ria. And for this afternoon, I will report about Martha Nosbom. Uh, Martha Nussbaum is an American philosopher. She is assigned in the Law and Philosophy Department at the University of Chicago, where she is currently teaching. So, Martha's main interest in philosophy are empiricism, feminism, Greek and Asian philosophy, and political philosophy as well. So, to sort of this support, I want to tell a story about an event that happened to Martha during her career. So. This is the story. Martha was preparing for a lecture at the Trinity College of Dublin in the year of 1992 when she learned that her mother is dying at the hospital in Philadelphia. Unfortunately, she couldn't get a ticket to fly back home till the next day, but instead, she gave her schedule for the lecture. On the nature of emotion, she remarked, I thought, this is inhuman. But later, she thought, I should do this. I mean, I am here. Why should I not do it? After that lecture, she returned to her room to begin writing again for her next lecture that she will give. On the plane next morning, she thought that there was something cruel or there was something unhuman for her being productive after knowing that her mother is passing away in the hospital. And she thought to herself that Maybe she didn't love her mother enough to see another way to go see her mother in the hospital. In this state, 
she said that we aren't very loving creatures when we philosophize. I think this line just wants to say that when we choose to be a philosopher, when we choose to philosophize, and when we choose to stand as a professor and not a daughter, we tend to forget our emotions. We tend to set aside our emotions and vulnerability as human beings. That is why Martha said that we are very loving creatures when we feel a philosopher of emotions. Also remark that it is a form of human love to accept our messy life and not trying to run away from it. This just says that us humans have a lot of circumstances that we face on every day, but it is still important and crucial that we should be aware of the circumstances, but still be grateful and appreciative of the life that we have right now. Statement. Martha also said that a good life requires striving for a hard goal. All of us have desires that we want to pursue in the future, so it is important to exert effort, passion, to the things that we want to achieve for us to get to the peak of our success or our goals. Another philosophy of Martha Nussbaum is that to be a good human is to have a kind of openness to trust things beyond our control that can lead us to be shattered. In this sentence, I believe that if we accept the things that beyond our control if we stop calculating too much about something that we are working on, maybe we could grow a lot faster and we could gain a lot of experiences that may drive us to the things or to the goal, to the desire that we want. Okay. Martha, being different from other philosophers, has this lyrical and elegant style of writing where she can capture someone's pain and someone's vulnerability through her writing. As Martha, as a philosopher that is centered on emotion, Martha celebrates being a fragile human being because she believes that being fragile is being human and being human is not setting aside our emotion and still be aware of them and still feeling them as a sign of us being human. That was Martha, a philosopher of emotion. Again, this is Ria. Thank you for listening. Hello, good afternoon everyone. I am Pauli Nicola Liu and I will present this philosopher Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak. Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak is currently a university professor at Columbia University and a founding member of the Institute for Comparative Literature and Society. She also belonged to the first generation of Indian intellectuals after independence. She is best known as a post-colonial hermeneutics and feminist theorist. Her works combines Marxism, feminism, and deconstruction. So her studies mainly focus on feminist movements and how it sees women in third world countries, education of people, especially women in third world countries, and people marginalized by Western states and terrorism in recent years. Spivak's written over 200 articles, including the most well-known for her philosophical essay, Can the Subaltern Speak? Year 1988, which became part of her book, A Critic of Postcolonial Reason, Year 1999. She discusses in her essay, Can the Subaltern Speak? that a core problem for the poorest and most marginalized in society, which is the subaltern, According to Spiva, subalterns are those who belong to third world countries. They have no platform to express their concerns and no voice to affect policy debates in demands a favorite share of society's group. The basic claim of this essay is that Western academic thinking is produced in order to support Western economical interests. That's why Spiva holds that Knowledge is never innocent and that it expresses the interests of its producers. And Spivax bring the light the suicide of an ordinary woman to explain how outside affects the subaltern. Can the subaltern speak? Yes, but the point here is that this speaking is a transaction between the speaker and the listener.
Good afternoon everyone, I'm Patricia Dorothy Bautista from Group 4 and I'm going to report about Judith Butler. Judith Pamela Butler was born on February 24, 1956 in Cleveland, Ohio, United States. Is an American academic whose theories of the performative nature of gender and sex were influential within Francocentric philosophy, cultural theory, queer theory, and some schools of philosophical feminism from the late 20th century. Butler's first book, Subjects of Desire, Hegelian Reflections in 20th Century France on 1987, a revised version of her doctoral dissertation was a discussion of the concept of desire as it figures in GWF. Hegel's phenomenology of spirit and its subsequent interpretation by various 20th century French philosophers. Judith Butler has supported lesbian and gay rights movements and they have spoken out many contemporary political issues. Her best known work, Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity in 1990 and the In It Sequel, Bodies That Matter on the Discursive Limits of Sex in 1993, Butler has built familiar cultural theoretic assumption that gender is socially constructed as a result of socialization broadly concealed, rather than innate and that conventional notions of gender and sexuality serve to perpetuate the traditional domination of women by men and to justify, justify the oppression of homosexuals and transgender persons. Over the years, Butler has also published many influential essays, interviews, and public presentations. Butler is considered one of the most influential voices on contemporary political theory and as the most widely read and influential gender theories in the world. Hi, my name is Kirsten Luis Titolantino and I will report to you Jean Paul Amar Sartre. Jean Paul Sartre is a French born in June 21, 1905 and died in April 15, 1980. He was one of the key figures in the philosophy of existentialism and phenomenology, a French playwright, novelist, screenwriter, political activist, biographer, and literary critic, as well as a leading figure in 20th century French philosophy and Marxism. His works has influenced sociology, critical theory, post-colonial theory and literary studies and continues to do so. He was awarded the 1964 Nobel Prize in Literature despite attempting to refuse it, saying that he always declined official honors and that a writer should not allow himself to be turned into an institution. His famous works are Imagination, 1936 Imagination as Psychological Critic, and Esques de une théorie des emo emotions, 1939 sketch for a theory of the emotions, and imag imaginaire psychology phenomenologique de imaginations, and last 1940 the psychology of imagination. Good day everyone, I'm Shaina Hartaro Cruz from Group 4, the 40. Husu was born at the year of April 11, 1955, at Jiangsu, China. He is a liberal philosopher who taught philosophy and law at Darcy University in China. He has published 10 books. Some of them are Essential Ideas of Liberalism, Successful Studies, Political and Legal Philosophy. He has been tasked with installing liberal principles in Chinese culture. He also authored the massive liberalism's essential ideas. Liberalism is an individual liberty, governor, consent, and equality are central to liberalism's political and moral ideology. After having an Eastern and Western education, he argued for the virtue of liberal values inside the Chinese political system in a book that was published in Taiwan and mainland China. 
In 2010, he collaborated on the anthology Democratization. He is a member of editorial board of journal Nano Ethics and a senior fellow at Fudan University Institute for Advanced Study of Social Science. He has published about 10 academic books, including Essential Ideas of Liberalism, A History of Western Political and Legal Thoughts, After Republic, Writing in Political and Legal Philosophy, and over 10 books translate from English, including John Rawls. His Life and Theory of Justice, he has been selected by British website The Culture Trip as one of the 10. Contemporary Philosophers to Read Today Together with Slavoj, Thomas Nagel, Martha Nussbaum, and other leading philosophers in 2017. Paul Miranda reporting Thomas Nagel. Thomas Nagel is a German philosopher, philosopher from the United States. Thomas Nagel is a philosopher from the United States. He was an Emirates University professor of philosophy and law at New York University from 1980 to 2016. Legal philosophy, political philosophy, and ethics are his main philosophical interests, and also referred as the most influential political philosopher of the 20th century. He is known for his critic material, Reductionism Accounts of the Mind. Nagel is the most recognized for his critic of material theories of the mind, most notably in his essay, What is Like to be a Bat, in 1974. According to Nagel, Reductionism is the least likely of, of all existing philosophical views to bring awareness to life. He believes that in order to understand the mind-body connection, one must confront awareness, which reductionism fails to do, as well as his contribution to liberal moral and political theory in the possibility of altruism in 1970 and later writings. Other famous works of Thomas Nagel's are Mortal Question in 1979. The View of Nowhere in 1986, Equality and Partiality in 1991, The Last Word in 1997, and also Mind and Cosmos in 2012. Thomas Nagels agreed that while a human might be able to imagine what it's like to be a bat by taking the bat's point of view, it would still be impossible to know what it's like to be for a bat to be a bat. I'm Sean Russell Arlaksamana from Group 4 and I'll be reporting John Henry McDowell. Okay. John Henry McDowell was born in Boxburg, South Africa, March 7, 1942. A South African philosopher, formerly a research fellow at the University of Oxford and currently a professor of the University of Pittsburgh. Although he wrote in Metaphysics, Epistemology, Ancient Philosophy, and Supernatural Ethics, McDowell's most influential works involve the philosophy of mind and the philosophy of language. Also, McDowell is one of the three recipients of the 2010 Distinguished Achievement Award from the Andrew Mellon Foundation 9 and a member of the American Academy of Arts and Science and the British Academy. McDowell's earliest published works deal with ancient philosophy, including a translation and commentary of Plato's Theotetus during the 1970s. He was active in David Sonian project to provide semantic theory for natural language, co-editing with Garrett Evans a collection of essays titled Truth and Meaning. McDowell's edited and published Evans' influential posthumous book, The Var the Vader of Reference, 1982. That's all. My name is Vince Joseph Manastas for reporting David Clamers. Clamers was born in Sydney, New South Wales in 1966 and subsequently grew up Adelaide, South Australia, an Australian philosopher, professor of philosophy and neural science specializing the arts of philosophy of mind and philosophy of language, a co-director of Center of Mind, Brain, and Consciousness, a professor of philosophy at Australian National University and also co-director of 
Phil Favors Foundation. He is interested in philosophy of mind, the foundation of cognitive science, physics, and technology, as well as the philosophy of language, metaphysics, and epistemology, and many other areas. I'm Miko among Labnan reporting Chalmers. Chalmers is best known for formulating what he calls the heart problem of consciousness. He wrote his 1995 paper, Facing Up to the Problem of Consciousness, and his 1996 book, The Conscious Mind. He makes a distinction between easy problems or cons of consciousness, such as explaining object, discrimination, or verbal reports. And the single heart problem which could be stated, why does the feeling which accompanies awareness of sensory information exist at all? The essential difference between the cognitive busy problems and the phenomenal prob heart problem is that the former are at least theoretical and cerebral by the dominant strategy in the philosophy of mind, physicalism. In philosophy, physicalism is the metaphysical thesis that everything is physical, that there is nothing over and above the physical, or that everything supervents on the physical. David John Chalmers is an Australian philosopher and cognitive scientist specializing in the areas of philosophy and language. He is a professor of philosophy and neuroscience at New York University. He has challenged other philosophers to solve hard problem of consciousness. This is the problem explaining the relationship between physical and mental state. He is an Australian philosopher and professor of philosophy and neural science and co-director of Center of Mind, Brain and Consciousness. And he is interested in the philosophy of thought and foundation of cognitive science physics and technology as well as philosophy of language, metaphysics and epistemology and many others. Cornel West he is a prominent democratic intellectual, philosopher, activist, and author. He has taught at Union Theological Seminary, Yale, Harvard, and the University of Paris. West's work focuses on American society and the roles that race, gender, and class have on it. Some of his notable works include Race Matters, which analyze racial debates, and Democracy Matters, which argues that if America is to become a better steward of democratization around the world, we must first wake up to the long history of imperialist corruption. West can be heard weekly on Smiley and West with Tavis Smiley on the National, National Public Radio Program by Public Radio International. Cornel West has a passion to communicate a, to a vast variety of publics in order to keep alive the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr., a legacy of telling the truth and bearing witness to love and justice.